Hello and welcome to Nature Source Care. This is Dr. Funda Goldman. I'm a naturopathic physician. And today I was going to discuss Marma Therapy Ayurvedic Energy Points for Sexual Health. So let's get into it. A note of caution uh, before we get too far along. The information presented here is for educational purposes only and should not be considered medical advice. For any symptoms that are severe or worsening, please contact a qualified healthcare professional. It is always important to determine the root cause of any disease and to develop a comprehensive treatment plan. Individual cases can vary in terms of treatments that are most effective, so please keep that in mind. Also, solo therapy, so doing something like Marma by itself, may not be appropriate or effective in all cases. So a few words about Marma therapy generally, if you don't know much about it. Um, Marma therapy comes from Ayurveda, which is traditional Indian medicine. It's more than 5,000 years old. It's a non-invasive therapy, and it's an energy therapy. So um, when I say energy therapy, it's, it's basically a whole energy paradigm, um, like homeopathy is a whole energy paradigm in medicine. And so uh, to get into this, you kind of have to wrap your mind around the idea that states of health and disease um, are kinds of energy waves and marma points are basically ways of modifying balancing rebalancing increasing decreasing energies in the body that create health and disease there are 107 marma points on the body and so with all of this um um, oh, I covered that already. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, so the whole idea here is that, again, you kind of have to, if you're coming from more of a conventional medicine standpoint, um, you know, where it's more biomechanical or biochemical, this is, again, more of an energetic paradigm. If you want more history on Marma therapy, I would check out my first Marma video, uh, Marma Points on the Hand. Um, I go into that a little bit more in depth. If you want an example um, of how to work with these points, or if you want your own experience, uh, if you haven't had an experience of Marma therapy, I would check out my Marma Points on the Hand follow along video. Um, I think it's about 20 minutes long and you can just follow along and see how your energy shifts. Um, regarding this talk today, you know, we're gonna be talking about sexual health other points related to sexual health um, that I won't be covering today because I'm going through the body kind of region by region. Um, but if you look at my lower Marma Points lower abs video, Marma Points lower back video, Marma Points on the mouth, or actually the Marma Points on the hands, they're actually points in those other areas of the body um, that are related to sexual health. So you have a complete list and if you're interested in this sort of content generally, you might um, look at my other, oh, excuse me, you might check out my playlist because I organize all my videos in a playlist. So if you're interested in this sort of thing, uh, you can check out the Marma Therapy, Ayurveda, and or Body Care playlist if you want more, more of this type of stuff. All right, so today, um, basically I'm only covering two points and this will finish out the torso. And then uh, from here on out, I'll move on to the legs because um, otherwise I've covered all the other points in other videos. Um, so before I get started too, just, you know, again, traditionally, um, this information has been, been taught in a sort of a gender binary way. So men and women, male and female, uh, sexual system, genitalia, that sort of thing. Um, and that's kind of not the state of consciousness at this point <laughs> for um, many people or the world. That shouldn't, the thing though is that you can still work with these points and use these points. So even if you're maybe a trans person and you've had, uh, you know, a gender altering surgery or something like that, you can still work with these points. And actually that's true for any Marma point. So if you've had surgery, if there's scar tissue, if there's been some alteration, even if you've like lost a limb or something like that, you can still work with these points because it's, again, it's, this is more of an energy paradigm. 
So these points exist not only on your physical body with these physical landmarks that I, I mentioned, but it's part of your energy body. And actually, uh, my instructor for Marma Therapy, he was even talking about one time that, I guess he was um, at his mother's uh, funeral in India, and he realized when they were chanting the mantras as part of the ceremony of her passing that they were listing Marma points. And he realized that um, they were basically, you know, even after this woman had passed, they were basically um, stimulating these points through chanting mantras. So it's sort of like Reiki in that way, because um, Reiki you can do at a distance and you can kind of send forward and backward in time, that sort of thing. Although I, I, I do not recommend doing Marma therapy and Reiki together. I've tried it. Um, and I find that it's just, it just sort of destabilizes the energy. Um, <clears throat> so I would choose one or the other. I, I do both. Um, and it was funny because after I tried it, um, uh, and, and didn't feel like it, it worked very well. Like you could just feel the energy scrambling if you're sensitive to these energies. Um, and then I did ask my instructor, um, and he confirmed, he's like, oh no, don't do them to you, <laughs> you know, cause they will destabilize each other. So, um, my personal experience and what he said, uh, matched up in any case, um, just keep that in mind as I go through, because I am going to talk about the male system and the female system, <clears throat> but you know, those are, those are two, um, you know, contrasts and there's a lot in between. So. So there are basically two points that I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to go through. They're basically correlative points on the male system and then the female system, and they have a lot of similar indications, except, you know, where the male and female system um, have different anatomy and or different functions. So, so for the man, and again, these are the two points. The first point is midna. Um, oh, excuse me, medra. Uh, this means penis in Sanskrit, and the location of it is the dorsal or sort of under surface of the midpoint of the glans penis, so right at the head of the penis. Um, the energies balanced by this point are the apana vayu, the vyana vayu, the ranjika pitta. Uh, these terms may not mean much to you unless you're a deeper student of Ayurveda. These are basically different energies in the system. So like a panavayu, for example, that's the that's a wind energy, and it's uh, wind is associated with movement, and a pana has a directionality of going down. So a panavayu is related to any sort of like um, secretions, um, fluids, movements downward. So things like menses, things like ejaculation, that sort of thing. So anyway, just one example. If you don't know these, don't worry about it. I'm probably going to do videos on that sort of these, these terminologies and, and indications um, or these energies later. Um, so anyway, the first point is Medra. The second point is Rushana, which means testicle in Sanskrit. So Rushana is basically at the central point of each testicle. The sort of diagram I created here, the very um, basic. <laughs> Um, this is again the underside or the dorsal view of male anatomy, um, but the version of points you can actually they can you can also see them from the top view, um, yeah. And the energies uh, balanced by vrishana are the apana vayu and the vyana vayu. Okay, so those are the two points, two locations. What are these used for? Oh, and I should also mention. Um, obviously these points are in a very sensitive area for people, men, women, especially you never know if somebody has had some sort of sexual abuse or trauma, they may not even know, uh, maybe if it happened really young or their mind kind of walled that off. I mean, you don't, you know, want to <laughs> trip into that and accidentally like, you know, um, you know, uh, re-traumatize them. So you can describe these points, but obviously only work with them on yourself. So these points, so anything local, again, all marma points can be helpful with local indications. So things like pain, inflammation on the men, um, epididymitis or hydrocele, so that's where water is kind of um, 
caught up in the tissue, low libido. Um, so if there's no interest, although I also was going to mention, we're talking about like anatomy and energy within a person, but sexual energy is so complicated. And especially today, I actually, when I was doing this, putting the slides together last night, it just came to mind how many of my patients aren't even interested in sex. <laughs> So because they're so burnt out, stressed out, their lives are so complicated, so they're so frazzled. Um, so keep that in mind, like doing these marma points without um, making sure that the whole person is well and rested, um, you know, because the sexual energy that's sort of like the, like it's, it's kind of ironic, uh, it's kind of like the icing on the cake. Like, it's the last system to get nourished, like as far as nutrition, like from an Ayurvedic point of view. It's it's the last to get fed, but it's the first to go when there's any sort of um, systemic uh, disorder. Yeah, so um, that's why I like to really be well in your sexual health you have to eat well and you have to sleep well and you have to manage your stress and you might have to declutter your life uh, of activities and things that um, aren't supporting you know you maybe their habits or you know obligations or something like that that you know maybe you've outgrown anyway it's complicated but you know again assuming that the person otherwise is well um, you can work with these points. Um, but if there's issues in, in, in this level of the person, the sexual system, you got to really look at everything else. So again, going back to the idea that marmotherapy is just part of a comprehensive plan. Yeah, okay. Anyway, so also things like premature ejaculation can be helped with these points. These points also stimulate what's called ojas. Ojas is this... Um, like super fine, that's the way they describe it in Ayurveda, the super fine fluid related to immunity. So when somebody ejaculates or has an orgasm, there's fluid released and energy released and that, um, and that's part of that is ojas. And ojas again is the super fine fluid that creates a glow in somebody, creates harmony in somebody. Um, that creates immunity in somebody because it kind of like it's this overall sort of protective um, nutritive substance um, and again we're talking energetically here um, and so if you ejaculate or orgasm too much um, you will start to deplete yourself energetically and also your immunity if it gets really you know um, to be a lot really frequent so there is this balance to be maintained <clears throat> from an Ayurvedic point of view. So because of this sort of, um, yeah, you know, a lot of people, you know, especially today, it's all in the media, um, sex is everywhere, or even kids are getting into pornography. I mean, it's like there's this huge dissociation um, between relationships and sort of the biological need for sex um, and really kind of overdoing it. So again, from an Ayurvedic point of view, <clears throat> the other thing too is that again, if you're, you know, from a conventional standpoint, if you're ejaculating too much from like masturbating or from pornography or, you know, that sort of thing, then basically every time you do that, you're lowering your testosterone. <laughs> um, so especially finding a lot of men, you know, even 35 years of age, I mean, they're young guys. Um, you know, they're having sexual issues because, again, they're too stressed out, they're working too much, um, and then they might be, you know, um, self-pleasuring uh, too much, and then their testosterone drop, drops, and then they have other issues, um, like mood, you know, and energy and stuff like that. Um, they have difficulty actually creating uh, healthy relationships with others and their partner. So anyway, um, to how does Ayurveda talk about this, or what do they suggest? How do they keep a balance between the sexual energy and then the other functions of ojas? Well, it depends on your constitution type. So there are three constitution types in Ayurveda. There's vata or wind, 
pitta or fire, and kapha or earth. So vata, like the wind, comes and goes. They're kind of naturally, their constitution type, they're the most kind of unstable because they kind of blow around um, in their life, um, in their mind, in their body. Um, they have the least amount of stamina of the three types. Then there's pitta. Pitta is sort of the mid-ground. Um, pitta are very goal-oriented. Um, so they tend to burn themselves out because they're doing way too much. Um, so they have more endurance than vata, but not, not more, they don't have as much endurance as they would like to have because their mind is always, has this huge to-do list and they're always trying to do the to-do list and, and it's kind of like they're, they just expect their body to keep up with what their mind wants to do. Um, and then the third one is kapha. So kapha is an earth energy, um, and they tend to be the more, most stable, so they're the they're less likely although with too much you know again ejaculation orgasm and loss of fluids and ojas um it'll take them longer to get depleted but they can still get depleted you know especially and again if like even my kapha patients and stuff like that i mean these are like you know steady salt of the earth people generally but even like during the pandemic for example you know, some of them were teachers and like one week they're teaching in class and next week they're teaching online back and forth. You know, it was, it was kind of a crazy time. There was no stability. And even my Kapha patients came in with Vata type issues. So wind issues where they were feeling anxious and, you know, that sort of thing, which is not, it takes a lot for a Kapha person generally to get anxious. So, um, Anyway, again, you got to look at the whole person and everything they're going through. And this also relates to the weather. So, for example, heat is produced through um, ejaculation orgasm. And so you can have sex a little bit more often, like during the cold months. But if it's really windy or the seasons are changing or it's too hot, those weather energies are already going to be a bit depleting. Um, or even like extreme cold. <laughs> like, you know, if it's like a gentle mild winter you could you know potentially have a little bit more sex but again if the weather is really out of balance that's going to make you unbalanced too so for vata types wind types um ayurveda suggests once every two weeks for pitta types they suggest once a week and for kapha they can have um, ejaculation or orgasm once or twice a week so <clears throat> You know, again, if you're feeling really, you know, if you're so burnt out and frazzled, you may not even want this much sex. But, you know, for people who are on the other side who are um, maybe uh, having too much sex, again, according to Ayurveda, not a personal judgment in any way, but, <clears throat> you know, we're just talking about the Ayurvedic energetic standpoint here. Um, and I also already mentioned points. You can work them even if they're scar tissue, like, you know, an episiotomy or something through um, or scar tissue from surgeries or pregnancy or whatever you can still work with these points that's not a problem um, the other way besides uh, manually <clears throat> touching these points um, like my video the marma follow along video you can check out I mentioned you can also um, stimulate these points by contracting the anus and contracting the pelvic floor <clears throat> almost like a kegel yeah. And then the other thing to know, especially with the male anatomy, is that these points, Medra and Vrishana, they're vital points. So if you have an injury to this area, like if you get kicked in this area, it can actually cause a cardiac arrest. So um, again, uh, be gentle and careful with these points. So um, this is the corresponding, these two points um, with corresponding uh, female anatomy and they have different names but you know the energies are similar. So the first point is called Yoni Jiva and that's Sanskrit for the clitoris. So this is at the tip of the clitoris. The energy is same as on the male anatomy, Panavayu, Vyanavayu, Ranjakapitta. Then the second point is called yoni oshta, which means vaginal lips, kind of like uh, labia majora in, what is it, Greek or Latin, Latin, I think. Um, and um, this is on the midpoint of labia majora on each side. So there are two points bilaterally. These are the blue points you see in the diagram here. So outside of the labia majora, that's where you would find these. 
any energies again similar to the Vrishna point on men, um, the Apana value and the Vyana value. And so same, basically the same deal here. So only use these points on yourself. Again, good for local pain, inflammation for women, dysmenorrhea, so PMS, and also elasticity of the tissue. So you can work with these points, especially the Yoni Oshta, as you're going through pregnancy to prepare yourself for an easier birth to you know get more elasticity in the tissue um, and you can work with the other way after you have birth and the tissue's too loose you can also work with these points to get a bit of the tone back low libido you know similar to men premature orgasm similar to men just sort of the female version again stimulates ojas you know the superfine fluid related immunity but again ayurveda suggests limiting ejaculation orgasm and i talked about the you know, um, frequency that Ayurveda suggests. So again, if you're a Vata type, once every two weeks. If you're a Pitta person, once a week. If you're a Kapha, one to two times a week. And again, these points will work if there's scar tissue or alteration. And you can stimulate these points by contracting the anus and pel pelvic floor, like a Kegel type situation or uh, technique. And that's it. So, um, two points, uh, male and female um, anatomy, and again, sex, you know, the whole psychosocial, cultural, personal, <laughs> you know, um, having a healthy sex life, again, these, these marmot points can be helpful, but you got to get into really uh, all sorts of things with somebody to make sure that everything's in balance and you know, up to speed and balanced, nourished, um, mentally, emotionally, physically for somebody to, um, make that work. So, uh, yeah. All right. So I think this is, yeah, today, the last day before the new year. So this will be the last video. Um, I wish you all the very best in the new year. Um, greatest blessings to you. I also want to just say I'm, I'm very thankful, um, for everybody who watches these videos and who subscribes to the channel and, and, and sends some nice comments, you know, some kind words. Um, uh, and again, I really do hope that, um, you know, that helps, that helps me. <laughs> it gives me, you know, a little bit of uh, encouragement to keep going um, and to know that my time is, is being spent well to help other people and support other people and their health and well-being. Um, and I also hope um, truly that these videos are helpful to you. Um, uh, maybe just giving you different ideas about, um, you know, introducing you a different paradigm of medicine that isn't, at least here in the United States, um, uh, much known about. Um, uh, like marmot therapy, a lot of people know about acupuncture at this point, although they didn't in the 70s when it was kind of first introduced to the United States. but. Uh, when I tell people I do marmot therapy, most people don't know what that is. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, um, but it uh, looks like there are a few of you out there who are um, probably pioneers in your own right um, who are looking for more, more therapies um, so that we can all be healthier and uh, better off moving forward. All right, so again, thank you for everything. I wish you all the best. Um, and until next time, take care. Namaste.